Love them or hate them, Bulldozers are the special enemy in Payday 2 that most frequently dictate the way a heist is going to go. Few other units can compete with their vast health pools, armoured faceplates and overall damage output, and that's why any build you create will need to have some inbuilt mechanic to take them out. In today's video, we're going to dive into the anatomy of the dozer, running through the many variants which can plague your DSOD attempts, how you can get the upper hand against them, and some of the strange quirks in their mechanics that you may be unaware of. And if you are somehow unaware of Apex Gaming PCs at this point, we've been partnered for a year selling an exclusive line of Payday playing monsters that are still well placed to handle Payday 3 when it releases in 2023. As ever, take a closer look at their specs from the link in the description. Back with the Dozer family, let's first get an idea of what we're up against. You should start to encounter them on the very hard difficulty, at which point they'll have 4,000 health, scaling up to 6,000 on Overkill, 12,000 on Mayhem and Deathwish, and then 24,000 on Death Sentence, with some unique variants scaling slightly differently. And as for their spawn logic, from very hard to death wish, their hard cap is 2, increasing to 3 exclusively on Death Sentence. This is excluding scripted spawns, such as the swivel chair dozer on Hoxton Breakout. On Death Wish and upwards, they can also spawn in deadly pairs. Additionally, due to how dozer variants function, it's possible for more than three dozers to spawn naturally on Death Wish and above, but I'll talk more on that when discussing those specific dozer types later on. It's also worth noting that bulldozers all share the same melee damage, scaling up to 200 on death sentence. Their lethality is why the sound of their distinct voices should always ring alarm bells even to the most experienced of us. To make them even more intimidating, ever since the housewarming party update in 2016, they've been immune to the usual stunning mechanics and able to sprint and fire, making their movements harder to track and take cover from. In total, there are over 10 different types of dozer, with many of them being reskinned to fight for different forces such as Murky Water or the Federales. Today, I'm going to run you through the 6 distinct variants, with a focus towards handling them on the Death Sentence difficulty. First up is the dreaded Green Dozer, equipped with the Reinfeld 880 shotgun. These guys were designed to be the most manageable bulldozers, beginning to spawn at very hard. In truth, they're actually some of the most problematic variants in the game due to their ridiculously high spike damage at close range. As is the case for all dozer types, the external faceplate has 150 HP and the inner visor 160, meaning it shouldn't take a massive amount of damage to knock them loose. The annoying thing for explosive users is that it will always take at least two shots as the outer layer protects the inner one from taking damage. In total, at ultra close range, these green dozers can dish out 560 damage a shot, meaning that high armor and health builds will be decimated almost instantly. Whilst dodge and army gating setups have a huge advantage against these guys due to being able to avoid much of that spike damage, then taking advantage of the green dozers incredibly slow fire rate. Most notably, these guys are the bane of Kingpin players, usually one of the best decks in the game. When activated, the injector makes you virtually immortal, however the green dozer simply deals too much damage to be healed at close ranges. It is worth mentioning that this damage will fall off quite significantly, even on Death Sentence, with the most notable jump coming in that 10 to 20 meter region, dropping down to a comparatively weak 70 per shot, then a measly 28 from 30 meters away. As such, if you can keep these guys at arm's length, they won't be an issue, but up close and personal, I'd rather face just about any other variant in the game. The Black Dozer starts regularly spawning on Overkill and comes equipped with the infamous Isma 12 gauge. These guys like to burst fire up close and personal and will put some serious pressure on gating or dodge builds with a higher average damage per second at all ranges. In fact, even around the 30 meter range region, they'll still be outputting 105 damage at a respectable fire rate. However, if you're used to dealing with the usual 225 damage per shot from heavy swats on death sentence, Black Dozers won't seem like much of a step up at all especially with how their fast fire rate and slow reload speed combination can be abused. In my opinion, these guys are the least impactful member of Dozer Kind on Death Sentence, but counter a spanner in the works when playing specifically on Death Wish, where for some reason they have a massive buff in damage potential relative to Mayhem. I can confirm they've halted a few challenges at early stages in the past. The Skull Dozer was the first real leap in Dozer mechanics, equipped with the powerful KSP light machine gun. The guy even launched with his own new difficulty, making him the poster child of Death Wish. What makes them exceptionally scary is their lack of any damage drop off, even on difficulties lower than Death Sentence. Their glaring fault is their reload speed, but given that they have 200 rounds in the belt, it's likely that either you or the Skulldozer will die before they get the chance to. 
Truly, these guys are the most consistent member of those kind, with few flaws but a manageable damage output once any heister gets used to the scale of death sentence. On their native difficulty of Deathwish, they can be a living nightmare to run into though, and should be prioritised due to their solid damage at all ranges, making them a consistent threat. The Minigun Dozer is a Deathwish and above enemy, rocking the ever powerful Vulcan Minigun. This thing does 80 damage a shot at close range, falling off to 60 at max range, which is still an intimidating figure, bearing in mind the insane fire rate of these guys. To make matters worse, they have double the usual health pool of regular bulldozers, 24,000 on Death Wish, and a whopping 48,000 on Death Sentence, making them one of the single hardest enemy types to deal with in the game. Interestingly though, mini dozers are some of the easiest to work around for veteran players. This is due to their incredibly slow movement speed, making solid cover their greatest nemesis. Honestly, with how immobile these guys are, unless they're expressly blocking your path, feel free to leave them alone and watch the assault wave mechanics prevent them from ever getting close to you. Not to mention, as they can't charge or sprint as most dozers can, they're very predictable in their movement, making them far easier targets, especially for an accomplished crit sniper. Bearing in mind their lower damage, higher fire rate style, tanky or highly damage resistant decks such as Kingpin or Stoic should eat them for breakfast, whereas the ever powerful Leech will often be torn apart by the rapid fire instances of damage. Finally, it's worth noting that minigun dozers do not count toward the standard dozer spawn pool, meaning an unlucky group of heisters could end up plagued by a couple of these tanks whilst already trying to handle a pair of their regular brethren, making them much more dangerous than they needed to be. The Medic Dozer is intentionally designed to not be an aggressive threat, but the fact that they only spawn on Death Sentence should be a giveaway that they're still incredibly dangerous. So on Overkill, thought it would be fun to reuse the Medic Revival mechanic on a target that has 13 times the health. It wasn't. Just like the Minigun Dozers, these guys exist in a separate spawn pool, meaning that you can end up with Medic Dozers reviving regular Dozers, Minigun Dozers, or hell, even each other, resulting in a never-ending conga line of idiots. To compensate for that, they deal pitiful damage at all ranges, capping out at the measly 20, but the issue is with how hard an enemy they are to prioritise, often being the reason you end up over Ran, as not only will you need to dedicate 24,000 damage towards killing them, they will also cost you thousands worth of non-lethal damage due to their revival capabilities. I've run into situations where two medic dozers were flanked by multiple standard medics, creating a fairly unbreakable body barricade in the middle of a choke point, the stuff of nightmares. And speaking of nightmares, the Headless Dozers complete the full Bulldozer family as the ugly stepchild who was never expected to stick around for long. Originally, these guys were added as Halloween exclusive enemies, but after the event heists were turned into permanent fixtures, they stuck around too, making already difficult maps even harder. Although their appearance is limited to only event heists or through the use of a mutator, they are still worth talking about. Due to their lack of a head, they of course can't receive headshot multiplier damage, which is slightly offset by having over 12,000 health on death sentence. They wield Chaos Peas just like the Skulldozer, but fortunately dish out damage reminiscent of the minigun wielding variant, meaning they have a lower total DPS. Of course, being immune to headshots, they're several times harder to kill than even the mini dozer by conventional means. It's almost as if the Commando 101 was made with these guys in mind. If you do want to take them on with ballistics, keep in mind that the shield covering their backs makes them even harder to tackle unless you have surefire aced or a weapon with innate penetration. You're going to have to learn how to tame these guys at some point if you want to obtain that DSOD mask, so don't write them off as irrelevant. When it comes to taking down the many types of dozer in the game, I have a few strategies I tend to lean on within my builds. The most common one shared across many is Bloodthirst Melee. Hitting a crit on a 16x multiplied swing of the pickaxe deals some pretty ludicrous damage and circumvents any need to work through the faceplate. This can be made even easier if you're running a pert deck like Sociopath. Next, if melee isn't the way I choose to go, I always like to consider if my build has a high fire rate option. Akimbo machine pistols such as the Strikes or high damage SMGs such as the CR805B or Krinkov will make mincemeat of the faceplate and tear through the dozer's health pool, especially when paired with crits. Spike damage is also worth considering, it's no secret that the Commando Rocket Launcher is pretty broken, and rest assured it will blow dozers apart, as they strangely take 1.1 times damage from explosive sources, especially when paired with a skill like Bullet Storm. Just be careful, freely firing towards the rapid fire minigun dozer, as you might end up with a taste of your own medicine. 
Snipers are also not a terrible option to consider up against these brutes. Whilst not ideal up against the faceplates, once you can cleanly shoot at the head, you basically have a walking graze target with a high enough health pool to decimate all other cops around them when successfully shot. Finally, if all else fails and you're running a bit of a meme build, just as long as you can remove the faceplate with the likes of the Explosive Judge shotgun, you can always use the Javelin throwable to deal fairly catastrophic damage to the head. The Humble Bulldozer is probably the most unique enemy type in the game when we get down into their mechanical specifics. For instance, they're one of the few enemies to have a fixed critical multiplier set to 5, irrespective of the relative headshot damage they should receive. They also have confusingly ineffective armour. Unlike the heavy swats, where a perk or skill is required to penetrate the armour, you can always deal damage through the dozer's bombsuit. In fact, very few skills in the game seem to work normally on dozers. The only one really standing out is the otherwise underwhelming counter-strike, allowing you to genuinely stun the brutes for a short window. Back onto their bombsuit though, the irony of them taking additional explosive damage is not lost on me. In all, the suit is made up of 5 additional components, plus the 2 visors, that can each be removed independently at 80 hit points each. These parts interact incredibly strangely with trip mines specifically, which actually deal their initial damage plus that damage again equal to every part of the dozer's armour caught in the explosion radius. At maximum effectiveness, this means the trip mine can deal up to 7 times its original damage on a bulldozer, which is why you sometimes see them get one shot emphatically. Also, due to how regular shotguns work, they're actually very bad at destroying visors as only one instance of damage is ever dealt by their scatter shot. Usually this is fine as it will prioritise the highest damage pellet if you land a headshot, but as the visor doesn't take headshot damage, it will prioritise completely at random, which is why it sometimes feels like you can't take that visor off no matter how hard you try. And with that, you can now graduate from this module at the University of Payday. As ever, almost all of this information is sourced and fact checked by the ever brilliant Long Guide, so check that out if you want to do some extracurricular work. As for me, I've got some challenge runs to get back to, so I'll see you all very soon. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.